Should I start? Yeah. I'm going to give an informal discussion about my research, I, you know, interests and background and my own background and a little about what my students are working on and the kinds of things we're going to work on in the next several years. I didn't prepare a PowerPoint, I just thought I would talk. So um, I started here at UCI 20 years ago in the civil engineering department and I was in the transportation systems group in civil engineering for a decade before I had the amazing opportunity to switch to computer science and that was 10 years ago. So um, my educational background was in system en systems engineering, uh, undergrad at Penn, master's in applied math at Hopkins, and then I did a, a MSN PhD in civil engineering, but very narrowly focused in uh, transportation systems engineering and operations research applied to transportation at the University of Texas. And I was always uh, interested in computational in, uh, issues in transportation systems. And there's a lot of those. So um, when I was working as an engineer, I spent some time working for the Association of American Railroads, building what at the time were really cutting edge visual representations. I, I make you know the gesture in this way because that's what they looked like. Layered visual representations of networks and we were modeling um, all of the rail movements in North America. And I had spent some time working for United Parcel Service about a year as an intern when I was an undergraduate. And a year after I had graduated, I had spent a year at the Association of American Railroads, and they, uh, UPS had started an operations research group. This was, um, oh, just about 30 years ago. and. Um, and they invited me to come back and join their operations research group. So if you don't know what operations research is, it's basically mathematical modeling of systems and systems optimization, looking for ways to use mathematical and computer-based models to make systems, and really any kind of system, more efficient. So I spent a few years in that group, and um, I come from a family of professors. Both my parents were professors. Uh, my twin sister was getting a PhD. Uh, with the intent of being a professor. She actually runs the libraries here, so she, if you see somebody who looks like me and I don't say hello, it's probably not me. <laughs> um, so anyhow, so transportation systems. So I started here working on optimization of transportation systems. I was still building um, the kinds of models I had done as a graduate student and as a working engineer, which was uh, routing and scheduling systems, optimization of routing and scheduling systems. So we did some work for uh, a major trucking company, J.B. Hunt, um, and while we were building routing and scheduling prototypes for J.B. Hunt, we found out about a fabulous new problem. This was about nearly 15 years ago, which was combinatorial auctions. So combinatorial auctions are um, auctions in which Multiple heterogeneous items are put out to bid simultaneously, and the bidders in these auctions value combinations of the items available differently based on what they have already. So a silly example I always give, I hope I didn't give this in that talk to the undergrads, is that what if, um, so my Uncle Percy is a collector of pink porcelain pigs, and Percy passed away. He left me his collection of pink porcelain pigs, and I don't want them, I want the cash. Right? So I put these, this collection up for auction, and people who have these collections of pink porcelain pigs will value my pigs differently based on their current collection. They're looking for things that will complement what they already have. So it turns out that the problem of bidding in these auctions is very complicated and the problem of selecting the winners in these auctions is very complicated. And, um, and while I use that silly example, lots of the contracting that goes on between major shippers, like a Walmart, Sears, any, any company that needs to move a lot of goods across the country or internationally, a lot of those contracts are developed using these combinatorial auctions. And trucking companies or third-party logistics companies that provide the services or subcontract to other people to provide the services 
have to create bids for these auctions. And when you think of uh, auctions, I mean, these days auctions are used about for lots and lots of things that they didn't used to be used for because it's really easy to um, run auctions over the internet and we have computational tools which allow us to both bid and select winners quickly. So when we first were working for J.B. Hunt, their engineers would spend two weeks locked in a room developing the bids for these auctions and what we did was find out about that process, and I've only been first once, but our group was the first to develop bidding strategies, computational, computationally based bidding strategies in those auctions. So um, other things I've done in the last few years is um, work on communication in ad hoc vehicular networks. So we, <laughs> we all thought this would be, um, we all, many of us, so uh, many researchers, spent 10 to 15 years working on these car-to-car, car-to-roadside communication systems. They're quite complex, and there's lots of interesting issues related to these communication systems in terms of security and speed and so on. And we imagine that, you know, certainly by now, but probably five years ago or more, we would be using these communication systems to make our freeways more safe and make the flows more efficient. It didn't happen yet, but it's sure to happen soon. So a lot of that work, so it's true for anybody who works in transportation systems, that we believed, I drank the Kool-Aid when I was a graduate student, we believed that technologies were going to transform transportation systems. But I started graduate school 25 years ago. It hasn't happened yet. But it's going to. So, you know, Several of my students are interested, they're just new PhD students, but they're interested in automated vehicles and everything about automated vehicles. One is much more likely to focus more on the intersection of machine learning, optimization, transportation systems, communication systems, while the other one, who comes from a computer science but also a um, master's in public administration, which is a, sort of like an MBA but more aimed at um, government organizations, she's probably going to work more on the societal issues related to automated vehicles, so issues of equity, fairness, <coughs> safety, uh, uh, algorithms that focus on safety, and, um, and again on equity. There's a lot of very interesting computational issues to be worked out, and societal and cultural economic issues to be worked out related to um, automated vehicles. So, uh, so once you um, work on network optimization, once you have a toolkit, well then you spend your time looking for new opportunities to apply those skills. And one problem we worked on for the last few years that I never thought I would work on, but it turns out it's really quite interesting, is providing ads for online advertising. So I don't, care, I don't give a hoot about advertising. I don't really care that much about commerce. I don't like to shop. But the computational problems behind feeding those ads and feeding them quickly and feeding the right ads to the right people or the right ads to the right websites is fascinating. So very, very difficult problems. Um, and a lot of those problems have something in commonality with many of the transportation problems in that we can solve them optimally using a tremendous amount of computational power and usually more time than we have, or we can develop screaming fast heuristics that solve these problems almost as well, super quickly, and are much more practical. So there's this you know, trade-off amongst people who develop algorithms between provable optimality or provable behavior that's very important to theoretical computer scientists and indeed is important for me for them to publish. And then there's practical considerations which relate to creating, generating the best possible solutions to solve real problems. And I'm interested in all those things. Uh, so a little more about what I do here on campus. So I'm directing our new professional master's program. So as of next fall, we're going to have our PhD program, our traditional master's program, which take, those students take the same courses that our PhD students will take. And we also have a professionally 
oriented, more project oriented um, four quarter master's program. And I'm directing that program. I'm also the director of our interdisciplinary master's and PhD in transportation science. So that's a very small program. We have a large program in transportation engineering, large programs in urban planning where they do transportation, a relatively large program in transportation economics. It's an economics MS and PhD, but it's in econ. And then we have this interdi interdisciplinary program which mixes all those three and now computational and data science. And that's a small program, but um, I don't know. We have oh, probably 15 students at a time involved in those programs. So much, much smaller than computer science. So I think I'll stop there, see if there's questions, and I see our next speaker. Is Harry our next speaker? I think I might. Oh, you're the next speaker. Oh, our next speaker is here. But uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I want to welcome you here. I hope you have a nice visit. I'll see you at lunch. I'll see you guys in the afternoon. And um, we're very happy you took the time to visit us.